I mean, she's just so cute. How can you not like her? Who wouldn't want to pull for this little munchkin? God, she's just so adorable. I just want to put her in a salad with ranch dressing and devour her. Oh, hi there. I hope you are doing well. Today I'll be going over every single thing you need to know about Nahida so that you can find the most success with her. I'll be going step by step on how to play, build, and use Nahida the best way possible. Just to emphasize how broken this character is, I'm gonna go ahead and share what my current Nahida looks like in game and that's gonna be the background footage that I use to clear the abyss. Very minimal investment, pretty much just garbage artifacts, garbage weapon, it just goes to show just how strong this character is. Now let's get into it by starting out with her talents. Her normal attack is, well, dendro attacks because she's a catalyst user. It also breaks the fourth wall because it's the keyboard key when she autos and a mouse cursor on her charged attacks. Her E ability is something special. Holding this ability, Nahida takes out a dendro camera, gains interruption to resistance, and marks up to 8 enemies with Tri Karma Purification and deal Dendro damage. In addition to being marked, enemies will also be linked with Karma Dendro Bonds. The best way to apply this to as many enemies as possible as quickly as possible is by spinning your camera around 360 degrees and giving yourself motion sickness. When you trigger an elemental reaction on these marked enemies, or if the marked enemies take damage from Dendro cores, they will trigger the bond and all the enemies that are linked up will take dendro damage based on Nahida's elemental mastery and attack, with the elemental mastery portion having higher scaling. This is part of several reasons that I'll cover as to why you're going to want to build a lot of elemental mastery on Nahida. The base duration of this mark is 25 seconds. The ability has a 5 or 6 second cooldown. The Tri-Karma Purification damage can trigger every 2.5 seconds. The cooldown, duration, and trigger interval on top of the fact that she is a Catalyst user makes her by far the best Dendro applier in the game. What makes her even more insane is that unlike characters like Shincho, Yalan, or Fischl, who all have very good elemental application, her application is just as good and it's AoE, not just single target focused. It's easy to use, easy to apply, and has extremely good uptime at basically no cost. Her burst ability is also something quite unique. It summons a giant cathedral looking shrine that is absolutely massive. This thing nearly covers the entire abyss floor and it's the biggest ult in the game. However, this ult actually doesn't do any damage and instead provides buff to Nahida's Tri Karma Purification E ability. These buffs vary depending on the element of your other party members. If you have a pyro character on the team, her karma bonds will deal more damage. It's a pretty nice flat damage increase. If you have an electro character in the team, then the interval in which the karma bond can trigger decreases. So like I said previously, it can trigger once every 2.5 seconds. But with this buff, it can proc more often, which is very powerful. And then lastly, if you have a hydro character on your team, then the duration of the shrine is increased. This is pretty nice and can almost act as a reduction in energy cost since it's on the field for longer. All of these buffs will be further increased if you have at least two of that particular element in your party. So for example, if you have two electro users, then the trigger interval will be even shorter. These buffs aren't so significant that you have to consider your team or build around them. I would say they are more in par with something like elemental resonance and that they are a little nice buff to Nahida that rounds out her role in the team. The base duration is 15 seconds and the cooldown for this shrine is 13.5 seconds. So if you have her ER covered or are using another Dendro character, this ability will be pretty much up all the time. She really doesn't have much energy problems given the low energy cost of the burst which is 50 and that just makes her even more powerful. Now let's go over her leveling priority for talents. Her leveling priority for talents should be her E ability first, then her ult, and then if you want you can level the auto attacks. Really depends on whether you want to use her as a driver or not. You don't really have to level the auto attacks but I think the value is worth it to squeeze out as much damage as possible as a driver. When I say driver, I mean like how you would use Sucrose in a taser team where she helps drive the reactions and is on the field for a long time. If you don't plan on using her as a driver at all and only want to use her as an off-field, then don't bother with leveling up her auto attacks. 
I would also recommend getting her to 90 to really maximize her damage, no matter how you use her. But in all honesty, this character is so busted, you could leave her at level 1 with level 1 talents and with a level 1 weapon and still clear the abyss. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's the difference between clearing the abyss and completely crushing it. What about her passives though? Nahida's first passive is that characters within her burst shrine will gain an EM buff. This elemental mastery buff is equal to 25% of a party member with the highest elemental mastery. So for example, if my Nahida has 800 EM and has the highest EM on my team and I use my burst, then switch to Kaching, Kaching will get 200 elemental mastery while within the shrine. Pretty wicked stuff considering that you are going to want to build elemental mastery on Nahida anyways and the fact that she ascends with Elemental Mastery as well. You put in a C2, Kazwa, or Sucrose, throw in a weapon like Elegy on Fischl, and you've got a pretty nasty amount of EM you can obtain on your team with literally no investment into artifacts. So much so that you'll have to consider diminishing returns on Elemental Mastery since past 1000 EM on Nahida drops off her damage pretty significantly. We'll get to why specifically the number 1000 in a second. Nahida's second passive is also pretty powerful. Every point of Nahida's EM after 200 will grant Nahida's E ability 0.1% bonus damage and 0.03% crit rate. To make that a little easier to read and understand, think of it as every 100 EM after your Nahida's first 200 EM will give you 3% crit rate and 10% bonus damage. I would like to note that this only affects her E ability and not her auto attacks, which is fine because that's where most of your damage is going to be coming from anyways. But it's something to keep in mind when you're building up her artifacts and then you see her crit rate is so low. Remember that her passive gives her crit rate, but you don't see that on the character sheet. When you do the quick maths on her ascension passives, you'll notice that both of them cap at 1000 EM. So that's why I said earlier that it's best not to go past 1000 EM because you hit diminishing returns and lose all those bonuses her passives provide. Her third passive allows her E ability to interact with objects in the world. You can collect any harvestable materials that are ore or wood with this passive, so getting those damn scarabs might not be as painful anymore. It can also bypass any barriers such as water or those like electro barriers. This is a super nice quality of life feature. It can also read the minds of people in Sumeru. Her third passive is probably the coolest world passive we've gotten in the game, and I hope that Hoyoverse continues on making cool passives like this. These are much more interesting and are a great quality of life while also not being game breaking. It's certainly much better than getting time reduction for exploration time. From her kit and how she operates, and also by and large being a Dendro character, it's pretty safe to conclude that Nahida is the best Dendro character in the game and a value asset to your account if you want to clear the Abyss. It's also safe to say that you're going to want to build or incorporate a lot of EM onto your Nahida while also trying not to overcap past that 1000 threshold. So now that we've got that covered, let's go over her weapon options. This section is somewhat complicated as it depends a lot on your Nahida's playstyle as either an on-field driver or an off-field applier, sick rhyme intended. I made this professional chart to help you determine what weapon to put on Nahida. I have found that for the most part, if you're using her off-field, use an EM substack catalyst. If she is on-field as a driver auto-attacking, using a crit rate or crit damage weapon is best. Honestly, even though I say this, just work with what you have if you have an EM weapon and want to use Nahida on field as a driver, then go for it. It will work just fine. Especially if you use something like Mava Mayor. It just won't work as well. There are a few exceptions to this. Favonius Codex, while not optimal, can be a nice choice to go for her to help battery your team. Black Cliff Agate is okay, but there is way better options and I don't recommend buying it just for Nahida. Thrilling Tales does work, and in fact it's what I put on my Nahida. I was easily able to 36 star the abyss with thrilling tales on her. Just keep in mind that you're gonna want to switch to an attack scaling character. Alright, so now we'll have to cover Nahida's constellations. Nahida's constellations are pretty interesting and powerful. With that being said, 
She is extremely potent at C0, so don't feel the need to get her constellations at all. I would also like to kindly remind everyone that there is no point in getting constellations in the current state of the game. Nor will there ever be a reason for pulling constellations because there is never going to be an endgame content for constellations to really matter. They are more of an icing on the cake and for characters that you really, really like. With that out of the way, let's go over her constellations. Her C1 makes it so that her burst counts the buffs as having two party members instead of one, always. Little nice buff, but nothing really dramatic here. Her C2, oh boy. I was contemplating on making a separate video on this constellation specifically, because I know a lot of people are going to want to pull for it. Let me explain why this constellation is bait. What does this constellation provide? Okay, well it provides effectively 20% increased damage for your Dendrocore teams and 30% defense shred for when you trigger a quicken, aggravate, or spread, which in a lot of Dendro teams is going to be pretty often. Defense shred is the strongest stat in the game, making this probably one of the best, if not the best, C2 in the game. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that, well, let's assume your best possible luck and that you hit pity at 75 pulls and each time you go to the 50-50. Then let's say every single time you win the 50-50 and get Nahida, it will cost you at a minimum 36,000 Primo Gems. So ask yourself, would you rather have 36,000 Primo Gems or would you rather clear the Abyss 20 seconds faster? The choice is yours. C3, no one cares. C4, it effectively gives Nahida 160 EM, unless it's a single target, in which case she'll get 100 EM. That's pretty awful given how much money or Primo gems you would have to have spent in order to get this constellation. C5, no one cares. C6, I don't know, it's just some weird stuff about dealing more damage and making her a better on-field driver. Her C2 is probably better than her C6 in all honesty. Now let's talk about her artifacts. Her artifact sets and substats are a bit interesting in terms of options. In terms of ER requirements, I would say having around 120 to 130 ER is good enough to keep consistent uptime for her burst. You're going to want to have a lot of EM as I have previously stated. I would say to first aim for 800 EM and above, and if you have been playing the game long enough, try to strive for 900 EM and above. After you get that initial 120-ish ER for substats, you're going to want to look for crit rate and crit damage and EM for your substats. For the timepiece, you'll want EM. Now, the goblet depends on how much EM your Nahida is getting. So say for example, your Nahida has no goblet equip and 700 EM, but she's in a team with a Sucrose and a Yulan with Elegy of the End. It's better to run her with a Dendro Damage Goblet than an EM Goblet. If you're in a sort of gray area, then just pick the one that has the better substats. For the circlet, crit rate or crit damage is gonna be pretty good. Just look at the ratio of crit rate to crit damage and remember to include the amount of crit rate you're getting from her Ascension passive. An EM circlet also works, especially if you have some really solid substats on it. You will want to prioritize crit stats if she is going to be on field with a Dendro Goblet, since she doesn't get as much value from EM as she won't be triggering as many reactions. For her artifact sets, you're gonna want to run Deep Wood Memories because it will boost the overall team's damage for Dendro reactions quite significantly. If there already is someone in your party running Deep Woods, then you can run her with Gilded Dreams. Fortunately, these come from the same domain. I have found that Deep Woods is essential to your Dendro teams, even if the stats are not good on your Nahida. It is still better to run it than not have it or run some other set with good substats like uh, Noblesse or Tenacity. I mean, just look at my Nahida. I haven't farmed this bloody domain at all, but I cleared the Abyss much more easily with this set that has trash substats than with my Noblesse set, which has good substats. Now, this section is actually the least important section. Let me demonstrate why with another professional chart of mine. So. 
as you can see, it's pretty clear. This character is so broken, you can use her in a physical team. It, it doesn't matter. But I'll give some recommendations and my personal favorites. I may make a separate video on her best teams and explain them more in depth if enough people are interested. The first team will be an aggravate team where you use two electro units, Nahida and a Animo unit, or Zhongli. You'll want an off-field Electro DPS like Kaching or Sino, and then support them with an off-field Electro unit, mainly Fischl, who is the real star of these teams. Any Animo unit will do, but Sucrose especially has high value since she can grant Ian to the whole team. A really solid and fun team with a bunch of Electro numbers flying everywhere. The second team I recommend giving a try is using Nahida as an on-field driver and a Hyper Bloom team. So to make this work, you're going to want to use an off-field Electro unit that can easily keep up Electro reactions and constantly be bursting those Dendro cores. Like for example, Yamiko, Fischl, or Kuki Shinobu. I will say though that Fischl doesn't really quite explode Hyper Bloom as well as the other Electro characters. However, that really doesn't matter because Fischl is Fischl. It's kind of weird because you'll end up triggering Quicken, Aggravate, Bloom and Hyper Bloom and it just works out to be effective somehow. Then you need a Hydro unit to create those Dendro cores. Someone like Xingqiu works exceptionally well and Yulan might be a pretty good option, especially if you have Elegy on her. The last slot pretty much has to be Zhongli. This is because while you can use an Anemo unit, I found it difficult to keep consistent damage uptime since Nahida doesn't have increased to interruption and I always kept on getting staggered. Honestly, this team is so brain dead. Like, you pop a few abilities, and you make sure you have Zhongli shield, and then you just go to town on enemies with Nahida. I found it pretty easy to use and very strong. It's the team I used to clear this last Abyss cycle. The third team is going to be a Burgeon team. You'll need Hydro units that can constantly have Hydro application to keep producing those Dendro cores. I personally recommend you use characters like Child and Ioto to accomplish this. Next, you'll need a pyro character to explode those dendro cores. You can use Tama and stack EM on him, who is pretty effective in virgin teams. Even more so if you have something like Dragon Bane or Kitan Spear. And at C6, he provides a pretty nice buff for Ayato and Child to utilize. The final slot can be another Hydro unit like Yulan or Xingqiu to more easily create those cores that explode. There's also some other shenanigans with Burning and Melt where you can constantly apply the Pyro Aura for some nice melts. More specifically, Melt Comps with Ganyu and Rosario. This is more of an alternative to existing Melt Comps rather than an upgrade. I would also like to point out that Nahida has buffed pretty much every team that needs Dendro Cores in their reactions because she can create so many of them so quickly. Before, Dendro Traveler was the best for this, but was a bit clunky because, you know, it's a circle, yada yada yada. The point is, there is now a new way to speedrun the game because she helps create more Dendro Cores faster. Nahida is a supreme and omnipotent character. Very easily an SS tier unit up there with Kazuha, Bennett, Zhongli, and Raiden. She is also the most free to play friendly character in the game, given the fact that she doesn't need much investment to function and her weapon options are incredibly free to play accessible. Even her constellations don't provide any quality of life features or substantial gameplay changes to warrant pulling for them. This is your last chance to get her if you want her. I would say it's worth your Primo Gems. And hey, if you don't get her, that's alright too. It'll always be in the next rerun. I know I was a tad bit late in posting this video, but I wanted to make sure that all my information was correct. I also don't have access to test servers like other content creators, but better late than never. If you enjoyed this video, then consider subbing and liking to see more content like this. Let me know in the comment section below if you have found this guide helpful. Oh, and one more thing. Remember to take care and have a lovely day.